Welcome to this week's Ask Amy. We are talking about all things solar panels because if you've turned on your TV, turned on the radio, logged into Facebook, anywhere, we see these ads for solar panels and then we see our neighbors putting solar panels on their home. Gage Mueller with ADT Solar is here today. This is not a commercial, but I do find you extremely informative about solar panels, probably because you're dealing with customers all the time and explaining this to people. Thanks Correct. for coming in. No, thanks for having me. So we wanted to talk to people about what you should know before going solar, because I get a lot of emails from people who have already done it after they run into the problems. Either they're starting to put them on or they've had them for a year, they have some problem, and then they're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had known this. And so we're talking to you about things people need to know before going solar. And the first thing is, even though you sell them, you say that you tell people, number one, solar panels are not for everyone. Correct. Why not? So there's a lot of things that come into play when you're going solar, right? The direction of your roof, the age of your roof, um, is there obstructions on your roof, tree covering? Maybe your neighbor's house is taller than your house, uh-huh. things of that nature. You know, understanding, do you qualify for the federal tax credit? Um, are you, um, what may happen to your homeowner's insurance policies? So there's a lot of questions that homeowners don't know what to ask. Therefore, that's why this segment's going to be great is because we're going to prep them with the homework to ask before they actually sign anything on a dotted line. Yeah. So let's talk about those. So whenever somebody calls you or you go out to talk to somebody about it, there are some things that they should check. You mentioned a few of them um, and we'll get into details specifically on each one of those. But one, yeah, your homeowner's insurance. I didn't think about that because if something happens to these solar panels, it's now sort of part of my house, right? Right. So the solar panels are technically attached to your dwelling, Mm -hmm. right? Therefore, by being attached to your dwelling, they need to be included in your policy. But your homeowner's insurance just needs to know that they're there. Okay. Right. And so I've had homeowners where their insurance premium didn't increase at all when they put solar panels on them. And then some that it's increased tremendously. So, you know, I don't, I don't like to be the guy that tells people to shop their homeowner's insurance because a lot of people have family members that are, you know, whatever. So but that's a big thing that people need to look at because is the juice worth the squeeze? OK, that makes sense. And then there is a federal tax credit available, but not everybody qualifies for it. Correct. So I, how can I find out before I make this investment if I'm going to get a tax credit? Right. So this is a good segue because what I tell my homeowners is I'm not a CPA. I don't pretend to be a CPA. I don't want to be a CPA and I don't play one on TV. Right. <laughs> so talk to your CPA, talk to your tax professional to see if you qualify for the tax credit. That way, you know, and the solar salesperson is not just telling you the government is going to give you a 30 percent rebate check because yeah. it is not a rebate. It is a credit. It's based Based on taxable income. Taxable income. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's a good one to know. And then because these panels are going on my roof, my roof might not be in great condition right now. Correct. So depending on the age of the roof, if your roof is usually 10 to 15 years, it may not be wise to do it. Um, but a lot of times we've seen roofs that are 15 years old and they look great. So if your roof is in good condition and a good solar company should come out and inspect the roof to make sure and let Mm -hmm. you know, hey, look, it may be time to replace your roof or it's coming time to replace your roof. So you may want to do that prior to going solar because look, when solar panels go up there, we're drilling holes in your roof. And uh-huh. that's the scary thing, right? To drill holes in a roof, especially if it's a brand new roof, mm-hmm. right? That's the biggest thing. Be like, I just got my roof replaced. Do you want to drill holes in them? Well, yeah, again, a good solar company is going to keep, there's going to be warranties on those holes, right? Roof penetration warranties. So the solar company technically takes over the roof warranty on that section of the roof. Therefore, if it does leak, they should come out and fix it, right? So reputable company is the biggest thing. But that said, if your roof is more than 10 years old, more than 12 years old, it's approaching that 15 year mark, and you put these solar panels up there that might be warrantied for 25 years, you probably want to get the roof replaced first. Right, because when it does come time to really replace the roof, right, Mm -hmm. now those solar panels have to come off. Yeah. And there is a cost associated with that. And so what happens is a lot of times people, they buy solar on price, right? They don't really do a lot of their homework and their digging. And now you've got solar panels on an old roof and the roof needs to be replaced. Well, now who are you calling to take those panels off? Mm -hmm. And if anybody just comes over and starts touching those solar panels, well, that could negate your warranties. So 
you know, and cost of replacing and, and reinstalling panels onto the roof, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking at anywhere from it could be $175 a panel to $350 a panel. Wow. And if you've got 50 panels up there, that could be an, you know, an expense, expense that you weren't expecting. All right. Number two, and I mean, I, this could almost be number one, because I feel like the reason that we're doing this is because so many people have encountered what they call scams. Um, I, I saw a commercial on YouTube the other day that said the government will pay for your solar panels. They even called it a solar stimulus. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, no. Is that true? It, the only federal agency or incentive out there is the federal tax credit. Um, it was just recently last year increased to 30 percent for another 10 years. So it is in place for 10 more years for 30 percent. It was 26 last year. And then I think it was June or July, somewhere around there, that uh, in the new stimulus bill, Mm -hmm. right, the Inflation Reduction Act, that it was bumped to 30 percent. So it is a 30 percent tax credit. The government is not buying your solar panels. So you're still going to have some sort of payment. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about that credit in just a minute. But some people see these commercials other people have a knock at their door and somebody wants to talk to them about solar panels i mean so what do i need to know about that i I used to say i mean as a consumer reporter for a long time you've heard the saying the only thing that you should buy from a door-to-door salesperson is girl scout cookies absolutely (laughs) guilty (laughs) yeah so if somebody knocks at my door i mean i'm immediately going to if i feel inclined to listen to them at least do some research on that company and not sign anything there on the spot yeah so what happens in today's world right a lot of people now have doorbells video doorbells uh-huh. right and so i'm not a big door knocker i it's not that i don't believe in it but i don't really answer my own door when somebody knocks on it so it's would be hypocritical for me to knock on yours mm-hmm. right so um you know not that i don't but I, I, what's funny is i knock on people's doors that have solar panels uh-huh. right i'm like look i can't sell you anything you own what i sell but how's your how's your system how's your you know whatever so Um, When somebody knocks on your door, their job is to either set an appointment with you or have somebody else come out and talk to you. And when that happens, now you're you're not a lot of times you're pressured into what's going to happen. And there's Mm going to be same day incentives. And let me call my boss. And, you know, why don't you want to do this? And solar is going to be probably the second largest investment you make on your property. And it's not something that you should take lightly, right? You should sleep on it. You should think about it. You should pray on it. Talk to whoever you need to talk to, right? To make sure that it's a good, wise move for you. Now, also be concerned that when you go talk to your neighbor or your best friend or whatever, the first thing they're going to tell you is solar is a scam, right? But have they ever sat through a consultation? Mm -hmm. No. And let's be honest, everybody now has a Google PhD, (laughs) <laughs> right. And so whenever a solar company leaves your house, the first thing anybody's going to do is they're going to go to Google and they're going to start, you know, doing their own research. So, you know, working with somebody you trust, somebody that's not going to be pressuring you into it. Hopefully the person that you're talking to also owns the product mm-hmm. and they can share with you their personal experience as a consumer versus a salesman. Got it. Okay, we want to take a quick break, but when we come back, let's talk about money. We want to talk about how much this is going to cost me, how much this might actually save me, and why I would do it if I'm still going to have to pay an electric bill. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this episode of Ask Amy. We're talking about solar panels and everything you need to know before you make the decision to buy and if it's right for you. So Gage Mueller is filling us in on all the details. Money, that's what I like to talk about. And I always say, you know, you told me you're not going to avoid an electric bill. That's another thing that you should know. You're still going to get an electric bill. Well, then what the heck? What's the point? So the the easiest way to think about going solar is you are now going to own the electricity versus renting it, okay. right? So today we are trained to buy our house, right? That's at a young age we're trained to own our property. Uh-huh. But in a solar in or uh, from a utilities perspective, right? Till the day we die, we're paying a water bill, a gas bill an electric bill, whatever it is. So now there's ways that you can actually own your power and own the electricity. And that's what solar is. So you're 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 reallocating some of your money, right, to a solar panel payment, uh-huh. or if you're paying cash for it, whatever. And now you're gonna own that specific portion of your power. You still are gonna be attached to the grid. 
So there's still going to be an electricity charge because of the way the net metering programs or net billing programs mm -hmm. are done in our state, right? Or on our utility. So that's a big thing that homeowners need to understand as well. Because I said, can I go off the grid? And he's like, oh, don't say that. Yeah. I mean, we don't say that because the way that electricity is set up is we still need, we're, we're attached to those meters. Right. But now you're feeding some electricity that your solar power panels are generating into that. Correct. Okay, sorry. Correct. No. So <laughs> to elaborate a little bit more on that, right? When solar goes on your house, the mm -hmm. first source of your power is coming from your roof. Okay. Right. So that power is feeding into your meter and the meter is going, oh, this power is coming from this source. It's not coming from center point. Right. Or the grid. We'll, we'll say the grid. Right. It's not coming from the grid. And then if you're overproducing power, depending on those programs that are out there, the plans from the retail electric providers on net billing, net metering, that will determine on what happens with your excess power. Most of the time you are getting some form of a credit whether it's, you know, a negotiated price, a real-time wholesale price, a market price, whatever is in that particular plan that you sign up for. And then that credit, that electricity goes back to the grid. They sell it to your neighbors. But when you need it at nighttime, they deliver it back to you at a fee, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is a distribution charge. And that distribution charge comes from Centerpoint, whether you're buying kilowatts from Green Mountain or any retail electric provider, or whether you're buying your own power back. Correct. You're avoiding the retail electric provider charges, but you're still paying that transmission and distribution utility right. charge. And the only way really around that is to install batteries. Okay. Right? So, Let's talk about that because yeah. then people are like, yeah, then I want to buy batteries. <laughs> right. So not everybody does that. Not everybody does that. Right. And so there's some, some misconceptions around batteries also that people just, you know, they need to understand. One battery is not going to power your whole house. Okay. okay? Let's just cut to the chase. Unless you live in a tiny house with no air conditioning, it's not happening, right? And so the draw of an air conditioner is just too strong for a battery to kind of keep up with it, okay. okay? So what happens is a lot of times from a distribution standpoint, if you have a battery, now your excess power is going into your battery and mm -hmm. then you can pull that power at nighttime and avoid those distribution charges, okay? okay? And as long as the grid is up, Mm -hmm. then that power coming from your battery is going to feed whatever is on in your house. It doesn't care. But when the grid goes down, now there's a specific critical loads panel that's put into place, and only that is powered when the power goes out. So you would have some power when the power goes out. Mm -hmm. The refrigerator, the freezer, right? Your essentials, mm -hmm. no air conditioning, right. right? Let's just get that straight. No air conditioning. Nothing really that's a 220 draw in your breaker panel. Okay. Now you can stack batteries and run more things. It just gets really costly. And batteries also do qualify for the tax credit. Okay. And it gets really costly because I said, well, how much are batteries <laughs> then? So depending on where you buy batteries, right? And this is, we, again, Google PhD comes into play, right? right. You can find batteries online for, you know, $2,000. But will that battery run your whole house or run what you're looking for? That's the battery you get on Wish. Uh, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hey, don't tell my wife. Um, and then, you know, but you, you'll you see, you know, you can go on certain websites and Tesla, for example, uh -huh. right? Tesla's selling batteries to consumers at like 8,500 bucks. Okay. And so when somebody calls me for a battery and I'm telling them, well, my battery is, you know, $17,000. We're like, well, why when I can buy it for eight from, from Tesla? Well, now you got to find somebody to install it, uh -huh. right? Now you got to find somebody to maintain it. And so it sounds good in theory and no solar company is going to install a battery that wasn't bought from them got it. because they don't really know where that battery came from. Okay. Right. So there's things in that area that you want to take into consideration. And again, batteries aren't a necessity, right? Uh -huh. They're not needed for solar. But if without a battery, your solar panels will not work if the grid goes down. Got it. That is very good information. One thing that you said, and I mean, oh my gosh, it's almost like people, when people start to consider going solar, they forget everything they've learned about financing anything, a car, a house, like any big purchase. And your advice was don't buy based on payments. Right. And so the solar industry is going to hate me for saying that, right? But... The reason why I state that is looking at solar is it's an investment into your property. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a reallocation of money. Yes. But if you understand how money works, right, you want to negotiate on the price of the solar system. Ask for a cash price. 
You can finance it however you want. A solar company is probably going to have multiple financing options. But if you ask for a cash price, it's going to be cheaper than a financed price. And if you have a way to self-finance it, by all means, do it that way. The solar sales guy may like you even more because he's probably going to get a better commission check because oh. now you're not taking his financing fees. Okay. Right? So it works out better in that instance. Okay. Right? I don't really I recommend anybody putting it on their credit card, right, and pay that off over time. Because credit, card, like, credit card, rates are very high. Right. Yeah. But, you know, if you're the type of person that pays your credit card off every month and you want to get the points on your credit card, slap it on your credit card. Yeah. Right. By all means. But basically what he's saying is if somebody comes in and says, oh, this is only going to cost you and they just throw out like two hundred dollars a month. But you have no idea how many years you're paying two hundred dollars a month and at what interest rate then you could be paying far more than you should. Yeah. And it, we can talk a little bit about how solar is priced mm -hmm. versus how electricity is priced. OK. Right. And so the first question that I get asked is always, well, how much is it? How much is it? Just tell me how much it costs, right? Just, I want to know how much it costs. Well, solar is actually customized to your specific house, right? It's based on your consumption. So not everybody is going to be the same in how your system size, if we own the same size house uh -huh. and you've got four people living in your house and I'm a single guy, right? And I'm never home. Well, I use power differently than you use power. But if our houses are identical, but yours was built 25 years ago and mine was built today mm -hmm. and I've got 20 people living in my house and you have your just one my house may be more energy efficient, so I don't use as much power. But what happens is people don't look at how much electricity costs. Uh -huh. They look at what they're paying per kilowatt, right. right? What my kilowatt hour is X. And when they get their electric bill, it's most of the time on an auto pay, right? And it just gets paid automatically. But when you take a step back and you look at how much you're going to pay over the next 20, 25 years in electricity, most of the time, I would say probably 99% of the time, it's going to be far more than what you're asking me how much my solar panels cost. Got it. So you're saying with inflation and every all of that, if you look and factor that out over the next 20, 25 years, then it w it's an investment into the future. Like, sure, right now you may pay, you will pay less on your electric bill, but you'll still have one. But say you're trading that money and you're putting that money instead towards your solar panels. Right. So now you get to go outside and look at what your money is going to versus donating your money to the electric company every month. Um, so then and, and we're going to take a break. But then I said, OK, so say I do sign up. I'm, I'm in a payment plan. I'm financing these and it takes me 20 years to pay them off. How long are these solar panels going to last? So panels will last probably 25, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, right? I mean, that's solar, a big spread. Yeah, okay. it, it is, right? And so let's just kind of narrow it down a little bit. Guess where, how the, the, the International Space Station is powered? Solar, solar panels. Okay. <laughs> you think they're replacing those panels all the time? No, or no. Okay. So it's solar panels will last. They have a 25 year warranty on them. Most good tier one panels have a 25 year warranty. So what I like to tell homeowners is tell me what in your house has a 25 year warranty, mm -hmm. right? And as long as, again, you're buying from a reputable company that's going to be around in 25 years to honor that warranty, that's a big thing, uh -huh. right? Then you really have nothing to worry about. Okay. But the panel itself has some degradation on it. Okay. A good tier one panel. Again, you're looking at 85 ish percent in year 25. So that panel, while it's still going to degradate at that level, it's still going to produce power. Okay. Right. So even it's like your car, your warranty is three years, but you can drive your car for 25. Mm -hmm. Right. If something goes wrong, then you have to fix it. Same Got thing it. with solar panels. Okay. All right. Good talk. Thanks so much. <laughs> Talking about money. <laughs> when we come back, there are a lot more useful, um, just minutia like things that you need to know that are very helpful like the smart meter texas that uh, this will be good information even if you're not considering solar and you have electricity and you're paying a retail electric provider but we're going to show you um, how it's useful if you do get solar panels we'll be right back welcome back to ask amy we're talking about solar panels and everything you need to know before you buy solar panels. The next thing you need to know, solar companies are not regulated. And there are so many different companies. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the one thing that I always try and tell people when they're doing their research, right? Find a company that's all in one. That way, you know that they're going to be around to honor that warranty. Look at reviews, you know, look at specific reviews of the salesperson, 
company may not be the right fit for them, but maybe the salesperson is the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. And if you're fighting for your client, that's the most important piece. Okay. And if that company goes out of business and they offered you a 25-year warranty, maybe your equipment's covered from the manufacturer, but who's going to install the new panel if something breaks? Right. And that's the biggest challenge that you face is a lot of solar companies won't touch somebody else's work because now they're responsible for it. Okay. Um, We've heard from people who go to sell their home after they've purchased solar panels and they might be financing them and they've said, oh my gosh, this can make it very difficult to sell your home. Yes. So first of all, you want to find a realtor that knows solar, right? Mm -hmm. First and foremost. Um, Second, what I recommend to all of my clients and anybody that asks me that question is whatever the balance is of your loan, include that in the price of selling your home. That way you can tell the buyer that, look, when you buy this house, these solar panels will be paid off. Trying to transfer the loan, it becomes, it can get very ugly, right? And I've seen it literally kill a sale of a house Uh because it just got ugly. But that's a really good idea. And so basically if I'm, you know, selling my house for $300,000, but then I've got $20,000 left that I owe for these solar panels, then I just list the house for three twenty. dollars I get the money, I turn around, pay off the loan, and all of it belongs to the new homeowner. Right. Now, there should be no problem with that, assuming your house appraises for $320,000, uh-huh. right. right? If it doesn't, then now the new buyer has to come with an extra twenty grand to you know make that payment. Got it. Okay, something else we wanted to talk about, and it's information that's sort of straggling, hanging out there. Um, we talked about this smart meter Texas, because a lot of times when people get solar panels, they don't have a helpful person who's worked with them to explain how much electricity your panels are generating. And so you don't, it's, you're like, okay, so I'm just trusting these people. There's an easy way to check that. Yeah, it's a very easy way to check it. And any good reputable solar company or, or you know, consultant, if you will, is going to pull up your smart meter, right? Every single one of us have a smart meter on our house. Mm-hmm. And this data is public information. You use your ESID number, the meter ID, and the retail electric provider, which is all on your bill. Uh-huh. And you can go in and create a smart meter account. And you can literally see how your house used power two days ago in 15 minute increments, right? It's really, it's useful information. What a solar company cares about, what they should care about is the last 12 months of your consumption. Uh But the good news is with Texas, um, with the Smart Meter Texas website, they're actually gonna show you the last 24 months. So you can actually see how your house uses power year over year differently. Okay, so that's smartmetertexas.com. Dot com. Go in there. All that information that you need to punch in to create an account is on your electricity bill. And so even if you just have a regular retail electric provider and no solar panels, you can go in and see how much electricity you're using every month instead of pulling out all of your last 12 months of bills right. to find that information. One other thing quickly before we go, I wanted to say not all retail electric providers offer these buyback programs or these solar programs correct but there's also a place to find which ones do yes and so it's uh, the texas power guide website and it is essentially power to choose for solar customers so they can see what the net metering or in our state it's really net billing and what all that really means on how you're getting compensated for your excess power. So just like I choose a retail electric provider for traditional electricity, when I get my solar panels, I'll want to go on there and see who's offering the best deal to charge me for um, or to to pay for the electricity, extra electricity that I'm generating. Right. And your eyes are going to roll on the back of your head, right? I mean, it can be very overwhelming and not really understanding how it all works. So hopefully, again, the consultant that you talk to understands it. And can help explain it to you. You can't get away from those whole electricity plants, even with solar. You've been a wealth of information. I appreciate you coming on and talking to us. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. We'll include all the information we mentioned here in the show notes of this Ask Amy episode. I hope you have a great day. 